lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we cover the quality of fishing today. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Jim Edlin. And right now, I think it's safe to say we're experiencing the good old days of fishing once again. And a number of factors go into that. State agencies, DNRs that are taking care of the resources that we fish, you know, on a lake by lake basis on many cases. Anglers are much more educated about releasing bigger fish so they can grow even bigger and then keeping the fish you know, in the slot that are, that are good eating. So I think all those things together are why we're experiencing such great fishing. Good points, Troy. And I think musky anglers have really led the charge in some ways. Going back decades to Muskies Inc. and what's happened in the state of Minnesota, we now have more lakes with viable populations of fish. Bigger fish are being caught, more fish, and there's growing participation in the sport. And the whole catch and release thing, for, in a large part, started right there. Yeah, yeah, it did. And right now, we want to take a look at the quality of fishing today and why it is so good. We've all heard the stories of fishing's good old days and seen the faded photos of fishermen in buffalo plaid, stringers almost too heavy to hoist, and proud smiles behind a haze of cigarette smoke. Seems crazy now, but until just a few decades ago, anglers kept almost everything they caught. My, how times have changed. Anglers now realize that fish are a finite resource, and selective harvest, catch and release, and smarter management are the keys to sustain healthy fisheries. As angler knowledge has grown at nearly light speed over the past decade, angler ethics have become even more important. High definition lake mapping, futuristic sonar technologies, and deadly presentations have given anglers a huge advantage over their quarry. Reality is, angling knowledge has overrun natural fish production. You'd think that the quality of fishing today would suffer, but quite the opposite is happening. In fact, it could be argued that right now, we're experiencing the good old days. Beyond anglers doing their part, state agencies have adopted smarter, more effective management strategies to create and maintain sustainable fish populations and trophy class waters. Case in point, the Minnesota DNR handles many of the state's waters on a lake-by-lake -lake basis, researching the bag possession and slot limits best suited to the long-term health of that individual lake. State biologists look closely at specific year classes, protecting valuable spawners while allowing harvest of juveniles and the occasional trophy. As a result, many waters are kicking out more and bigger fish than ever before. Such is the case with panfish, where experimental and special regulation lakes are now producing trophy bluegills and crappies. Although some of the angling public was apprehensive of lowering bag limits on specific lakes to five or 10 bluegills, or minimum length requirements for keeper crappies, once anglers experience the positive results, they're thankful for the change. Another example of better fishing through management is Lake Vermilion in northern Minnesota, a lake that proves musky, walleye, and smallmouth bass populations can exist in harmony despite what anglers will tell you. Vermilion's fishing for all species is off the charts, but the elephant in the room throughout much of the upper Midwest is the spread of aquatic invasive species, or AIS, which can radically change entire ecosystems. In response, state agencies, private organizations, and anglers have worked hand in hand to stop the spread of these silent invaders. Boat ramp checks, public awareness campaigns, and angler stewardship have slowed the spread of Eurasian milfoil, zebra mussels, spiny water flea, starry stonework, and other invasive plants and animals. At the end of the day, if there's any lesson to be learned, it's that the management of healthy waters and good fishing is everyone's job. Yes, it is everyone's job, from young anglers to elderly anglers. And with the youth today, I mean, the high school bass fishing teams, the college fishing teams is exploding across the nation. And they're very educated, much more educated than I was. I know when I was in high school. And I think, you know, when you take the spectrum of that young anglers, old anglers, and, and what they're doing and how they're taking care of our resources, that's why the fishing is so good. 
You're absolutely correct, Troy. It is everybody's job. And we've got some really cool technology out there now via social media that allows us to share our catches so we kill fewer fish. We don't mm -hmm. need the big stringer shots or the big cooler shots mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, we could share stuff you know, via photos and validate that catch. This Underwater Minute is brought to you by Aquaview, the original underwater camera. Today's anglers have learned to identify a host of fish holding vegetation types, cabbage, coontail, elodea, and milfoil. Same goes for the food fish eat, shad, shiners, panfish, the list goes on. But where we've fallen short is learning to identify the many forms of aquatic invasive species, or AIS, that exist in some of our region's waters, and taking the steps necessary to prevent their spread. Now let's have a look at these silent invaders. Eurasian milfoil, a scourge to lakeshore owners, but ideal for bass. Zebra and quagga mussels, voracious filter feeders of microscopic particles that game fish need. They also create a hazardous underwater landscape. Spiny water fleas, these buggers eat the zooplankton small fish need and make a mess out of fishing gear. Rusty crayfish, these critters feed on good green fish holding weeds until they're simply gone. Round gobies, they're food for fish, but they're also thieves that can empty a smallmouth nest of eggs in mere minutes. Asian carp, prolific spawners that push fish out of their ecological niches and whose acrobatics can actually physically harm anglers. For example, did you know that mere seeds left in a live well can contaminate the next waters you fish? Sad but true. Our best defense? Clean, drain, and dry every time you load your boat. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be. Until I added smooth moves to my boat. It's four spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now it's time for our highlight destination feature. You know, Troy, we're just fortunate to live in the upper Midwest. Mm -hmm. From the Dakotas through Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, we have so many diverse multi-species fisheries that sometimes it's hard. You can't fish everywhere all the time. Yeah, that's true. There's, there's a ton of lakes with big fish and about anything you want to fish for. And we want to head up to northern Minnesota to one of those places, Lake Vermilion. Minnesota's Lake Vermilion is known as the Lake of Red Sunsets. 40,000 acres of picturesque waters dotted with nearly 400 islands and 1,200 miles of shoreline. It stretches 40 miles across Minnesota's Arrowhead region, situated between the Boundary Waters Canoe Area and Superior National Forest near the towns of Orr, Cook, and Tower, Minnesota. Vermilion has been a favorite with pleasure seekers for over a century. In the 1940s, 
the National Geographic Society declared Vermilion one of the top 10 most scenic lakes in the United States, and it still is today. Yes, Vermilion offers anglers a truly up north experience, where you'd be hard pressed to find more beauty oh, and more job. available yeah, fish species buddy. in one lake. So check this out, huh? Isn't that a beautiful fish? What's the old saying? Big waters, big fish? That's very much the case with Lake Vermilion, which produces plus size everything. That includes panfish, largemouth bass, bruiser smallies, pike, trophy muskies, and lots of walleyes. With a strong forage base in the form of tulabies, plentiful young of the year fish, and various minnow types, fish are booming across all year classes. You couldn't have designed a better walleye lake if you tried. It's got all the right stuff, rock, weeds, sand, gravel, and the wind and water movement required for successful spawns each year. The best way to catch vermilion eyes? It's set up for about any way you want to. Rigging, jigging, pitching, trolling, jig wrapping, and one of our favorites, slip bobbering during the twilight hours. While your chances are good at a new personal best, Vermilion keeps supplying visiting anglers with plenty of eater sized fish also, which means no trip is complete without a classic shore lunch. And then there's bass, and lots of them. Beeline to the lake's rock reefs and weed beds, and you're sure to find as much action as you can handle. For fans of big toothy critters, Vermilion's the place for everything from bucktails to topwaters to giant pieces of plastic. It'd be hard to fish every potentially fish holding point, rock pile, and weed bed in a lifetime. A classic and timeless up north experience without too much time on the road. Lake Vermilion offers lots of water to explore and explosive multi species action not to be missed. Got her in! Yeah. Woohoo, buddy, buddy! Yes, Lake Vermilion is a, a real special place. When I was young, it was one of the first. Uh, lakes that I got to fish for muskies and really fueled my passion for doing that today. Right now, we want to take you out in the field around the region for the first of our BuzzBite reports. Jason Mitchell here checking in. We've been bouncing around Minnesota, North Dakota here this past week. Devil's Lake Fish are still shallow. Five to six feet of water seems to be the magic depth. We're starting to catch some fish pitching cranks. We're catching fish on swim baits and then, you know, the classic slip bobber and leech presentation has been working well. Still the key is finding warmer water and uh, fishing the windblown shorelines. All these bays on Devil's Lake that are a little bit shallower that have that warmer water. That seems to be the ticket. Either rip wrap or gravel rock sand shoreline seems to be the key. This week we're over on Leech Lake as well, and uh, Leech Lake had a good opener. Been a lot of people up here fishing. It's been a pretty decent bite. Wind seems to activate these fish up here where you get some wind and uh, people are snap jigging. Classic shiner presentation over the sand and weed lines that are seven to maybe 11 feet of water or so, but uh, there's also a lot of fish up here and you know people are catching a lot of fish to eat as well. Leech Lake is fishing well, and, and as Devil's Lake is too, and so We've been fighting some wind, that's probably been the biggest thing this week, but uh, especially on bodies of water like Leech Lake, it can help you. Our next report, we're going over to the Alexandria region with Joe Segura. And the key to finding walleyes this time of year for me is finding the new weed growth. If I can find cabbage or various weeds uh, on the nice hard bottom like sand, gravel, and rocks, uh, there's, there's pretty much nothing better than that. And it's going to hold uh, bait fish in these areas and walleye all the way through June into July. And these areas are super easy to fish. Uh, you can fish just about any technique in there. Bobbers, lindy rigs, uh, jigging a minnow. Um, you know, it's not the dense weeds a lot of people think they are. You know, I'm talking about when I say I'm fishing weeds. Uh, you're gonna go with your locator, you're gonna see a bunch of weeds, and then it's just gonna be a hard bottom, rock and gravel, and then there's gonna be more weeds again. And uh, to me, these areas are gonna kick out a ton more fish in June. Uh, come July, yeah, you can fish the outside weed edge, but uh, through the month of June, you fish these pockets and, and look for these nice hard bottom areas inside the weeds, and you're going to catch yourself a lot more fish. It is interesting. That's some great information there, especially when you're locating walleyes and you find the right balance between the weeds and the hard bottom. Hey, coming up after this break, we have more buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues.
explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Our next report, we're heading over to Michigan with Ben Wolf. It's Memorial Day and we have some wonderful opportunities for anglers all across the state. Up in northern Michigan, the smallmouth bass are on the spawn and it's the peak time to catch these awesome fish. It's really important to practice catch and release when we catch a fish off of the bed as these are the parents that are guarding the eggs as well as the fry and this will help ensure a next generation of great angling opportunities throughout the years. Walleye anglers down in the Saginaw Bay area are still catching lots and lots of walleyes, pulling both spoons, but predominantly pulling crawler harnesses pulled at a slow 1.1 to 1.5 miles an hour. For anglers getting out on Lake Michigan, we have some tremendous lake trout and salmon action all across the western side of the state. If you're looking for a captain or a guide in the state of Michigan, please give Sportfish Michigan a call or check us out on the web, sportfishmichigan.com. That's a great point that Ben made, you know, releasing smallmouth bass when they are bedding, any fish when they're bedding like that to ensure there's plenty of fish to catch in the future. Our next report is from Justin Geike in Wisconsin. Hey, if you're trying to do some fishing here in north central Wisconsin, the Wisconsin River System, fishing has been excellent for all species, especially spawning largemouth and smallmouth. But all good things come to an end. We've had a bunch of torrential downpour and the Wisconsin River System is super, super high right now and really muddy. Doesn't mean there's not still fish to be caught. If you're trying to find these bedded smallmouth on uh, gravelly shorelines, anywhere from one to six feet of water right now, I love to go and use a search bait. A lot of really good search bait options. One of my favorite is going to be the swim jig with the paddle tail on it. Really effective, runs high in the water column. Uh, top water baits like chug bugs and skitter props are also another really good option. If those fish don't eat and they come up and they swat at the bait, hey, you've located them, they're protecting, then I love to go back to my all-time favorite finesse tactic for small bass. The wacky rig Senko doesn't get any better than that. And from Wisconsin, we're heading up to northern Minnesota, Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Walleye bite, pretty much any approach to it right now, put fish in the boat, starting to fish leeches now, on slip bobbers, uh, pulling spinners, we have emerging weeds, some of your, your sand grass that is up, and some of the smaller perch in there, you know, walleyes in there right now, so uh, focus on your transitions, and just switch things up, and that should get some walleye in the boat for you. The bass are starting to spawn too, they're up tight right now making beds, that'll be a fun bite for the next couple weeks. Also, our musky opener is approaching fast. Uh, this thing's shallow on them. They're back in their bays, working their way out. And this still small stuff. Uh, I like some of your smaller blue fox inlines with that chartreuse blade, uh, twitch baits, that sort of stuff. And uh, like I said, it's a great time to hear fish muskies because you can actually fish light tackle, and that's a lot of fun. Our next report, we're heading over to Leech Lake with Bro. The wind is blowing, and that means the walleyes are biting. Leech Lake is full of big fish right now. It's a blast. It's a good time to get out, drift with the wind, controlled trolling. Uh, shoreline connected points are excellent this time of year and also vegetation. I've, I've been using RZ jigs from Earthland Fishing Tech. It's an eighth ounce jig. 
And what I'm doing is, I'm taking a shiner, nose hooking it, like that. So there's a Leech Lake Special right there. Sometimes I double hook the minnows, sometimes I nose hook them. If, if we get a cold front coming through, this is the best way to go. And then throw that out there. But a key thing too, is to go along the brake lines with an aqua view, after you mark your fish, go make sure they're walleyes. I found a school of suckers that a bunch of boats were sitting on. There wasn't even walleyes in there. There were suckers. But Leech Lake right now, the water temperature was in the 60s. It dipped back down to 58, but it's, it's going to slowly rise again. The panfish are going. The walleyes are going. Everything's going. And for our final report, we're heading to the St. Cloud area with Josh Hagemeister. We've got 57 degree water, lots of current coming into these lakes because of the heavy rains we've been getting the last week or so, and the walleyes are responding by hanging out in these current areas. Uh, no doubt about it. A lot of eaters like this. Uh, we're using JB spinners, night crawlers, half ounce bottom balancers. We're working three to four feet of water. Um, there's multiple lakes in the St. Cloud area that have current areas like this with uh, creeks or rivers flowing in, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, just shallow water, using the bottom bouncer, using the spinner. Uh, troll at about one mile per hour, uh, drag the current, pretend you're fishing in a river, only you're in a lake, look for the current lines on the surface. Uh, don't be afraid to go too shallow. Coming up after the break, we're heading over to the workshop for our cool product segment and then our technique of the week as Angling Buzz continues. Excel Outdoors, storage solutions for sportsmen. Cargo rack. Cargo trunk. Bucket caddy. Jaws of Ice, the best auger carrier ever. Hunting, the ladder stand caddy. Fishing game boards and the extruder board. Organize your life outside. Excel Outdoors. If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. And now it's time for today's cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Hey, summer's here, I know I'm excited. Bass are on fire, walleyes are biting. Hey, when it comes to smallmouth bass, it's pretty hard to beat a tube. There are a lot of different manufacturers out there, but as long as you remember, you've got black and blue, you've got watermelon, you've got green pumpkin, and there's some jig heads on the market. Some of the ones here, like from Northland, the inner tube jig, that's a great option. Also from VMC, the Finesse Half Moon, this has a little bit of a different fall when it's rigged with a tube. Again, lots of different sizes, a few colors you need. You'll be catching smallmouth bass, whether you're on Mille Lacs or wherever you're fishing. Also, when it comes to walleye fishing, you've got to have some jigs in your arsenal. Hey, since spring through right now, the Fireball Jig from Northland is in everybody's box. You've got some bright colors. I love bubble gum. I also like gold, orange. You know, these are ones you've got to have in your box. They're still catching fish. Speaking of summer walleyes, they're in transition. A lot of fish are set up deeper already, and there's a great crankbait bite. When it comes to crankbaits for walleyes, think profile. You've got to have some shad profile baits, and you've got to have some minnow profile baits. No matter what colors you choose, think about natural forage and attractor colors like clown and fire tiger. You've got to have a few of everything. Bagley makes a great bait right here, the shad uh, deep driver, and then the husky jerk, the down deep, Hey, we're fishing a little bit deeper. These are solid options. 
On the technical side of things, from Rapla, we have the fisherman's combo. You've got a braid scissors, you've got a pliers, you've got a scale, and you've got a ruler. The ruler is super important because as we know, there are slot limits that are being enforced on different waters, different lengths. Make sure you're legal with the fish that you keep. This will help you do that. Another really cool product for summer fishing and outing is the Excel Outdoors cargo rack system. It increases the amount of space you have to store gear. Might be a cooler, gas cans, whatever, in the back of your vehicle, side of the trailer, or an ATV. It's just fantastic. All these products are available at your local Mills Fleet Farm or fleetfarm.com. Hi, I'm Captain Ben Wolf with Sportfish Michigan, and I've got a rig that I want to use today and it's called the Zika rig. So all this rig is really is just an extra wide gap worm hook that we put a split ring on and then I use a finesse drop shot weight and what that allows us to do is to change the weights depending on the conditions. What happens when this falls it falls straight to the bottom just like that and then the tube is flared and then when we drag it along the bottom the weight is able to be felt by the angler because the weight is exposed and so it's, it doesn't have the dulling effect that the plastic does around the, the weight if the jig head were inside the tube. And to rig this, all we do is we just, it's a standard Texas rig. And that's it. So all I'm doing with this tube is just working the, down the shoreline break where it goes from three feet down into 10 feet. So the same areas that I go looking for anything that looks different, a light spot, if there's a darker bottom, or a dark spot if there's a lighter bottom. Those are all the same places that we want to cast, either a drop shot rig or a tube. The thing I love about this is you can either do it with a bait casting rod or you can do it with a spinning rod. It's such a versatile option. I got one here. Nice post-spawn fish, and you got it right in the top of the, the jaw. They're pretty up here, and so much fun. The tube, a fantastic bait you need to be fishing for bass. Hey, and on next week's episode, we're talking fish finding logic. That's going to be a good one. Be sure to join us. And as always, we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you leave any body of water, remember, clean, drain, and dry. Also, check us out online at anglingbuzz.com. That's where we have all of our guide reports, tips, tactics, articles, videos, photos to help you catch more fish right now. And you can also enter our sweepstakes sponsored by Mills Fleet Farm for a fabulous weekend of fishing and fun on Lake Vermilion. Thank you for joining us. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. We'll see you at the dock. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Road. Frank Rolston. Lee Talkin here. Topwater's been really, really fun. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week. <laughs>